Hello everyone. Happy Friday. Let me get started with the slide. So the topic for today's uh, video lecture is going to be a continuation of uh, what we uh, started uh, last lecture. So uh, today's topic is uh, going to be about the uh, HTML language which is uh, which stands for hypertext markup language. So uh, last lecture we saw how we can transfer data from one computer to another using uh, uh, the HTTP uh, protocol which stands for hypertext uh, transfer protocol. So uh, today's lecture we are going to cover uh, what sort of uh, format does uh, data usually uh, come in as part of uh, HTTP response. So uh, we did cover a lot of uh, JSON examples during last video lecture. Not all content is actually uh, going to be in the JSON format. In fact, uh, the dominant format uh, for uh, content in the uh, web is going to be the HTML format and we are going to uh, learn today how we can uh, create a website using uh, HTML. So you might be wondering why exactly do we have to learn how to create a website uh, as part of the data science course. Uh, there are a couple of reasons for that. One uh, is that uh, uh, you have to deal with a lot of uh, data in general when it comes to data science. So you might want to uh, create a website and share your own custom data set uh, with uh, somebody else. Uh, uh, that you want to share the data with or let's say to make the data set public. Like I mentioned uh, during last lecture, there is a lot of uh, data out there in the internet for you to download and analyze. Similarly, you might want to make your data available in a public manner. So that would be the first reason. And the second reason would be that uh, uh, you want to be able to uh, parse the HTML data and try to extract data from it. We know how to parse uh, uh, text files and put it into string and we also know how to parse uh, JSON and put it into a dictionary. Uh, but as I mentioned, majority of the data is going to be in HTML format. So you have to uh, know how to process HTML data. All right, so let's do a quick recap of uh, what hypertext is. Uh, hypertext uh, would be a word or a set of word which has a clickable link. For example, uh, on the left, pain here, uh, let's uh, 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 take into consideration that this is an index.html file, uh, which would be the landing page for majority of uh, the web pages. And suppose I have like a couple of uh, links, clickable links on the index.html page. And uh, let's say you click on contact, that will usually take you to another web page uh, to uh, uh, get you the contact.html details, which is going to look something like this. So uh, there are a couple of things when it comes to dealing with hypertext uh, in general. So the first uh, point is like, how exactly do you retrieve the content uh, uh, of uh, the pointed to by the hypertext link? Uh, that is like, how exactly do you go from uh, this word to the actual document? And the second uh, point about the hypertext is, how exactly do you actually uh, render the content which is in HTML? form on your web browser. So last class I uh, mentioned about uh, uh, client programs. So your browser is a type of a client program and it's a special program which is uh, written to uh, re receive HTML file, parse it and render it in a human readable format. All right. So Let's do a quick recap as to how you how uh, hypertext works with respect to HTTP protocol. Uh, you'll have uh, your client browser from which you'll actually send uh, a HTTP request which will include a URL. The URL, uh, recall that URL contains uh, three different things. Uh, first is the domain which identifies the remote computer machine. Uh, and uh, the next thing is the port number which is optional. Uh, HTTP has default port 80 and the third thing is uh, the actual resource that you're looking for which is the resource uh, rsrc.html and the browser will go ahead and send a http request in the form of uh, a plain text request which will be of uh, method get type 
and then uh, of course the remote machine will uh, process the http request and send uh, the response which contains a uh, uh, few things like status code and uh, other details which includes what content type is being returned and that would be html in the case uh, uh, of uh, majority of the web uh, um, websites all right so along with uh, the details uh, the http response includes uh, the actual content which is going to be of html format uh, html format often comes with uh, different formatting tags uh, i'll be covering uh, some of those tags today so as you can see uh, the browser parses uh, the HTML code and renders the data uh, to you in a human readable format. So uh, HTML is quite easy because it's a markup language as opposed to Python which is a scripting language. Uh, you can actually learn HTML on your own without uh, uh, you know, much difficulty considering that you've gotten so far uh, into this course uh, and you were successful in learning uh, Python coding. All right, so uh, let me actually show you a comparison between a regular text file and a HTML file. So I'm going to actually go to my course website and show you these two examples. So last uh, lecture we saw how we can uh, send a HTTP request and download this hello.txt file right which had like the string uh, saying hello CS220 students and uh, the rest of the content. So I want to show you uh, what uh, the corresponding content looks like in a HTML file. So uh, let me go back and forth here. So as you can see this is an unformatted uh, text because it's in text file and uh, as you can can see the same text can be formatted uh, in a different way if you are uh, using a HTML format. So uh, for instance, I have like part of the text uh, in bold and part in uh, italics and uh, some part of it in bold and italics. All right, so let me go back to the slides and uh, uh, Actually, before that, let me uh, let me show you one more thing. So, if you're viewing the HTML file uh, from the browser, you can actually do things like uh, right-click on the browser and uh, click on View Page Source. So, I'm showing this demo on Mac. Uh, it might look uh, and on a Chrome uh, browser, it might look uh, different in a different browser. You just need to poke around and find uh, what uh, option that particular browser provides. So, if you click on the View uh, Source page link, you can actually see the source for any website. So, this particular uh, website is very simple. Let me actually go to google.com and uh, uh, if you click on View Source page, as you can see, you'll see that this is much more complicated uh, HTML structure. All right, so let me go back to the slides. Let's make the slideshow. All right, so uh, the main thing that you need to deal with when it comes to HTML is something which is called as the tags. So tags often come in pairs. So tags enable you to add uh, uh, a special uh, uh, effect to some part of the text. And we'll be seeing a lot of examples of tags in the uh, next few slides. All right, so for the next few slides, this is the format that I'm going to use. There is going to be a rectangular box on the top right corner, which is going to contain the source code of the HTML file. And the laptop display is going to be the browser uh, rendered display of the HTML page. And I'm going to talk about uh, tags on uh, this uh, space on the left side over here. All right, so the first tag that I want to talk about is the bold tag. Uh, B stands for bold. Uh, the way that uh, paired tags work is that you're going to mention within angle bracket the type of tag that uh, you, are, you are dealing with. So that's going to be the beginning tag and the closure tag is going to be uh, within angle brackets and, but you're going to include the forward slash and any uh, text within uh, the opening and closing tag is going to have that special effect. So for instance, in this particular HTML uh, um, code, uh, this is going to get rendered as this is and the test is going to be uh, in bold and uh, uh, nothing else is going to be in bold. Uh, so if you move the page inside the bold tag, now that is going to get displayed as uh, bold. 
all right so the next tag that i want to talk about is the italic tag uh, uh, in short i so uh, if you want to display text in italics uh, you can use the italics tag uh, again it's a parrot tag uh, if you move uh, if you want to add like multiple tags uh, you know uh, for different parts of the text you can just like include that part of the text within that tag all right. Uh, of course, you can apply uh, multiple different tags to the same text to include the uh, combination of special effect. The way it works is uh, you open a tag and uh, in this case an italics tag and then you open another tag in this case which is the bold tag. Uh, keep in mind that you need to close uh, whatever is the latest tag that you opened first. So you'll close bold first and then you'll close italics next. So this uh, uh, is something which is slightly confusing for people uh, and people get thrown off. So always you need to close uh, whatever is the latest tag that's uh, open. So as you can see, this is now both italics and bold. All right. So let's talk about uh, white space in general in HTML. Uh, unlike Python where uh, if you have a string and if you have a lot of uh, vertical white space, it's actually going to uh, take into consideration uh, uh, that uh, it needs to, Python needs to read slashes whenever you're use, uh, reading that string from a regular text file. Uh, but uh, for a test uh, sorry for a HTML file vertical space is in general going to be ignored so in this example as you can see there is a lot of vertical space but uh, uh, that doesn't actually get rendered on the browser so how exactly do we mention vertical space in HTML uh, let's see there are a couple of options for that and the first option is uh, uh, something called as the paragraph tag so paragraph tag uh, just stands for like uh, start a new paragraph Paragraph. So there is going to be a gap between the two uh, uh, text lines here because you are uh, using the paragraph tag for both of those. Alright, so the next way that uh, you can uh, specify vertical space uh, or like in general uh, uh, um, format uh, the size of a text to uh, make it look like uh, uh, title or like header whatever you want to call it is by using something which is called as the H tag. So, uh, somehow uh, they determined that h1 is going to be the uh, biggest uh, header size. Uh, so uh, if you have some text in h1 that's going to get displayed in a uh, huge uh, um, font, uh, uh, not font, huge, uh, um, what do you call that, uh, the number of the font the size of the font, huge size of the font, sorry about that. Uh, so uh, it, you can keep using uh, a uh, uh, increasing number with H, like for instance, you can do H2 uh, up to HN. Last I saw there were like uh, six headers uh, up to H6. Uh, as you can see, H1 is much larger than H2 and so on. All right. Uh, the last thing that I want to talk about uh, with respect to introducing vertical space is uh, how exactly do you insert new line into a HTML code. So that is by using something uh, which is called as the BR tag in short for uh, break, line break. So one thing which is different from uh, the tags that we have covered so far in this one is that this is an individual tag and uh, it doesn't have to have a closing tag essentially. So uh, BR, uh, one BR tag will add like one new line. So if you want to keep adding multiple new lines, you can just keep adding multiple BR tags. So uh, one other thing which I want to mention with respect to the BR tag is that sometimes you might find uh, this particular format where people use uh, br and then have a uh, forward slash at the end uh, that is uh, same as what you do with just a regular br tag this is just a format which some people use and prefer to use all right so uh, the next thing that i want to introduce to you is something which is called as uh, the list so uh, you want to have like pretty format display on your HTML page, right? Suppose you want to display a specific list uh, like 
like uh, uh, a bulleted item list you can use uh, uh, the tag which is called as unordered list and uh, this tag is going to have like uh, sub tags in it so as part of uh, the uh, starting tag which is uh, going to be ul and the end closure tag is going to be slash ul and within this tag there is going to be sub tag for uh, each list item so if you want to have one item you'll add uh, the li tag which stands for list item and then you'll add the item as part of the li tag the uh, if you want to add another item, you'll add another li tag and so on. So uh, the closing tag uh, for uh, list item is actually optional. So you can ignore that and just have the opening tag. All right. Uh, sorry. Before I move on, uh, uh, this is with respect to unordered list. Uh, you could use uh, another tag called ol, which stands for ordered list, uh, in which case you'll get uh, numbered list uh, over here instead of the bullet point list. And uh, you can uh, mention uh, the number, uh, the, the numbers get ordered uh, in a default increment fashion, 1, 2, 3, and so on. All right, so uh, let's actually move on to doing a demo. Uh, this is going to be a short demo where uh, uh, let's say that uh, we have a list in Python which is going to uh, specify uh, your uh, grocery items list. And uh, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, this uh, list of string and I'm going to show you how you can uh, convert it into Python, uh, sorry, uh, into HTML uh, uh, format by writing a Python program, All right? So let me move on to Jupyter Notebook. So uh, the first thing that I want to do is I just want to create a function called uh, gen HTML, <coughs> excuse me which uh, takes uh, a list as an argument. So let me call that list as shopping list. And of course, we want to have uh, the name of the HTML file uh, where we want to write the contents to, right? So let me actually just go ahead and uh, print uh, shopping list and print HTML path for starters. And let's try to do a test of uh, this function. Uh, so suppose I have apples oranges and let's sorry and let's say milk let's also add banana all right and i'm going to call my destination file where i want to write the html to as shopping.html uh, let me go ahead and run this code uh, get underscore oh uh, I used get underscore HTML instead of gen underscore HTML. There we go. Uh, all right. So, so far the function is good. It's printing our list and uh, the HTML file. So, uh, let me go ahead and uh, write a for loop uh, for printing each item in the list. So, let me call uh, the variable name as item for item in shopping underscore list. Let me go ahead and print item just to test uh, that we are good. All right. So now we need to be able to somehow format item and write it into the HTML path, right? So uh, recall that uh, you need to use the open function call uh, to be able to write contents into a file. So I'm going to use the open function call and provide it uh, provide HTML path as an argument and uh, recall that you need to use the uh, W parameter because you are trying to write a file here and uh, let me go ahead and capture uh, the file uh, uh, object and I am going to go ahead and uh, close uh, the file immediately. Good practice to add the close line before you actually do anything with the file. All right. So, uh, let me see. So uh, let me go ahead and just uh, uh, write uh, the items uh, as such into the file and then we'll talk about how to format it. So recall that uh, you need to use the write function call uh, to be able to write the item uh, into a file. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, run this and let's see whether this generated that particular file. Uh, oh, sorry. I actually closed uh, that session and I'm going to go back to my Jupyter Notebook and try to reopen that particular session. Sorry about that. 
Okay. Got it. So uh, as you can see, uh, now we have a shopping.html. Uh, let me actually zoom it uh, for you. What happened? Uh, you somehow have like apples, oranges, milk, banana all together in the same line, right? Let's go and fix uh, this and I'm going to actually zoom out so that you can actually see this code. Uh, all right. So uh, let's actually add the HTML uh, constructs. Uh, uh, going back to my slides, uh, if you want to add uh, uh, an unordered list, you, you have uh, two different uh, tags that you need to deal with, right? So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and write uh, the UL tag. So let me open a UL tag and uh, uh, I have to also close the UL tag after my loop. Uh, is done writing each of the list item right so I'm going to go ahead and uh, add the close so what do we have to do in the loop is that uh, each of those uh, list uh, uh, entries are going to be part of a li tag right so let me go ahead and uh, add a li tag and I don't want to actually assume that item is going to be a of string type. So let me go ahead and typecast item to string type. And if I go ahead and run this and uh, what you'll see is that uh, whenever I'm regenerating the HTML, it doesn't actually automatically, the browser doesn't actually automatically display the updated HTML. You need to always uh, hit uh, refresh to be able to see the latest copy. So as you can see, now we have a little bit of a, a better formatted text. So let me actually uh, mention what uh, URL is showing up for this HTML file. So since we wrote uh, our HTML file on uh, the local laptop, uh, you'll not see any uh, you know domain name here other than localhost. So localhost refers to the local computer and uh, it's saying uh, uh, the port number that is being used is 8889 and uh, um, that's the port number that is uh, used for Jupyter Notebook if I'm correct. So uh, that's then we are uh, just like rendering shopping.html in this browser and the browser knows how to read the HTML uh, format. All right, so let me go back, uh, sorry, let me go back here and let's do uh, a view page source. So um, actually that's going to display uh, uh, what is there uh, in uh, as part of uh, uh, the Jupyter Notebook. So let me actually go back to the Jupyter Notebook and uh, say, uh, okay, uh, I need to be able to edit uh, this uh, file. Uh, let's see, uh, I'll come back to that actually. I. Uh, sort of don't recall how we can uh, do an edit of this file. Uh, let me actually go back to the terminal instead. Uh, there is an option for you to edit that file from Jupyter Notebook. I'll uh, post that during next lecture. Uh, instead, let me actually do a cat of the HTML file that we just created. So as you can see, all of this text is in just, uh, um, uh, all of the HTML tags are in just one ugly line, right? So so that's not very readable uh, for programmers. So let's make uh, this more readable. So let me go back to uh, my script on Jupyter Notebook. So as uh, you can see, I didn't actually add a new line after each of uh, these uh, entries, right? So let me go ahead and add a new line. So since I'm writing HTML is in plain text, so I'm just like writing the content as strings. So I can just add a new line to the string and let me go back to my terminal and now you'll see that uh, the HTML is formatted properly, right? So uh, new line is uh, going to be applied uh, uh, as uh, a line <coughs> as a line break uh, <coughs> for the HTML file. On the other hand, if you want to actually uh, have uh, space, uh, uh, vertical space, uh, which is getting rendered by the web, web, serve, web uh, browser, then you need to add BR instead of new line. So let me actually show you what that looks like. So if I go ahead and run this and refresh the browser, oh, did I run it? Okay. Oh, that's weird. 
why is that not adding a new uh, line break okay let's see uh let me go ahead and uh, try writing some other thing instead of writing uh, a list so let's say that i'm writing just a regular string saying okay uh, this text is bold for some reason that uh, uh, br tag is not working uh, with uh, the list item I guess like I can figure out why that is not the case and I can tell you as part of the next class. Uh, yeah, as you can see uh, now there is vertical space between the list items and uh, the text that I just added. Oh, I added the vertical space like after. Okay, here we go. Let me add it before so that you can actually see how vertical space gets displayed as you can see that uh, uh, move the text like a little bit uh, down than before all right so let me go ahead and remove uh, the last two things so this is going to be example one which is uh, shopping list to html all right so let me switch back to the slides and i'm going to talk to you about a uh, few more uh, tag types so uh, before I uh, go into specific uh, uh, other specific tags, uh, I want to give you an overview of what a complete web page looks like. So, uh, so far we just like uh, added some uh, uh, string without uh, uh, any uh, formatted uh, uh, regular formatted uh, html tags so uh, the there are two tags which you'll find on all uh, html uh, pages in general the first one is called the html tag uh, the whole file is going to be enclosed within the html tag and the next one uh, is something which is called as the body tag uh, it uh, means exactly what uh, the term means it's the body of the html file and sometimes you might find uh, a tag uh, which is called as head so there are a couple of things that you can do with a head tag uh, for instance uh, you can mention uh, uh, search engine keywords uh, which uh, let's say that uh, since this is a test page i can just uh, like mention test as a search engine keyword uh, and uh, i can mention the keyword as part of the head tag or uh, you could add a title which is going to uh, determine what is being displayed as part of your browser uh, tab so uh, I'm talking about the tab uh, within your browser which is going to be on the top instead of the actual browser content or the URL. So as you can see before using uh, uh, the title tag uh, the name shows up as test.html uh, whereas like uh, you can give a proper uh, formatted name as part of uh, title tag which is going to uh, give you a better display uh, a more professional display. All right. So uh, the next uh, tag that I want to talk about is uh, the hyperlink tag. So far we didn't actually see how exactly to create the hyperlink which will enable you to click and go to a different HTML page, right? So uh, for this example, let's take into consideration two HTML pages and let's say that you're initially on a.html and you want to go to b.html. Uh, so you want to be able to have uh, page B as a clickable link. The way that uh, you're going to do that is by using the A tag, which stands for anchor. So A again is a bar tag, you'll have a opening tag and then you'll have a closing tag. So uh, what the A tag will create is that it'll just create uh, a link uh, uh, on this particular uh, uh, word so page b is now going to be a hyperlink but we didn't actually say where uh, uh, that particular uh, hyperlink is pointing to right we didn't say okay when you click on the hyperlink go to b.html the way that you can mention that is by uh, adding a uh, attribute name called href so uh, href stands for hyperlink uh, reference, the page that you want to reference with this hyperlink. So uh, attributes work in a similar way like uh, key value pair uh, in dictionaries, uh, excepting that instead of a colon, you'll use an equal to sign. So the key is going to be the attribute name and the value is going to be uh, whatever value that you want to assign to that particular attribute. So in this case, we want to uh, create a hyperlink to b.html page. So now you're 
if you look at the browser rendering of a.html uh, that will now have a clickable link for page.b and if you click on it it will take you to uh, uh, yeah, b.html which is going to say you are on uh, page b all right so uh, the next demo uh, that I have on my slides is uh, something which I'm not going to do. Instead of uh, this demo, I'm actually going to do a demo with uh, the Amazon reviews uh, that all of you have been working hard on uh, for P9. Uh, so let me go back to my Jupyter Notebook. I have a data folder in the same uh, uh, path that I have my uh, demo underscore lecture underscore 32 uh, notebook. Uh, so I have one of those review files which is review review1.csv. Uh, As you can see, uh, this particular CSV has like a lot of uh, reviews, right? So I'm let me actually tell you what we are going to do with this particular demo. Uh, what I'm going to do is I want to take uh, each of uh, these review lines. <coughs> Excuse me. And I want to create uh, a new uh, HTML page for each of those reviews. Uh, and I'm going to create a master page which has a link to each of those reviews. That's going to be the eventual goal of uh, this particular demo. So uh, let me actually go to my Jupyter Notebook and uh, let me start a new example, which example two is going to be Amazon reviews uh, to HTML. All right, so let me get started uh, by uh, first reading uh, the CSV file. So uh, recall that you need to import uh, CSV for uh, reading the CSV data. Uh, I would always recommend you to do imports at the beginning of the file. That's good practice. Uh, all right, so let me write a function called uh, CSV to HTML, which is going to again to take two variables, right? So we need the CSV path and we need the destination HTML path. So before doing anything, let me actually go ahead and uh, invoke this function. So I'm going to say uh, instead of saying data slash uh, review uh, review one dot CSV. Recall that uh, hard coding slash is going to make your uh, program not work on other uh, uh, you know operating systems. So I'm going to go ahead and import OS and I'm going to use uh, OS dot uh, path dot join instead of uh, saying data uh, uh, slash review one dot HTML. I'm going to just pass uh, data and review uh, one dot uh, CSV, sorry, I mentioned HTML, CSV as uh, an argument to that. And let me call uh, my, uh, uh, you know, master file reviews dot HTML. All right. And uh, um, let's see. <coughs> so what do I want to do? First thing that I want to do is I want to be able to print these and verify that I'm receiving the correct arguments. Uh, all right, that's good. Uh, that seems to be fine. So let me go ahead and uh, read the CSV data first. Uh, recall that you need to open the CSV uh, file and this time we have to open it in read mode. Uh, let me go ahead and close the file handle uh, file object immediately. Uh, so uh, what do I have to do for the reading? Uh, I have to use CSV and uh, I know that this uh, is going to be uh, uh, read using the dict reader uh, uh, function. So in CSV, I'm going to uh, use the dict reader function and uh, let me uh, capture the response into a variable called reader. And uh, what do I want to do? I want to be able to iterate over each rows of the CSV, right? So I'm going to say for uh, row in reader and let me actually go ahead and uh, print row. So that's going to throw a lot of content in here. So as we can see, uh, uh, one thing that I want to highlight is these are not regular dictionaries, right? Uh, as you know, these are order dictionaries, but uh, pretty much uh, they work uh, like a regular dictionary and you can do all the regular dictionary manipulations with that uh, uh, based of the dictionary uh, format that you have the for the review file. 
all right uh, so uh, just in case if you're not able to follow any of this uh, it's likely that you're lagging behind on project p9 so i would recommend you to uh, go uh, focus on p9 and uh, uh, you know try to complete as much as uh, of p9 as as soon as possible all right uh, so what do i want to do with uh, each of these uh, rows so uh, let me actually get uh, the content out of the rows so we have uh, review id let me uh, save that as uh, r id and r id is going to come from uh, row of uh, uh, review review id and the next thing that i want to extract is the title of the review which i'm going to extract from uh, uh, using row of uh, review title that is going to be the uh, key for that and finally the actual uh, text of the review right so let me just like call it as text and uh, i just want uh, uh, the uh, value pointed to by review space text right uh, let me go ahead and uh, try to print uh, these three things to verify uh, that uh, you know uh, the code is working so far uh, that's good so we have the review id and uh, the review title uh, and the actual text of uh, the review that's good all right so uh, let me go ahead and remove this print so before i uh, <coughs> Uh, go through the actual solution let me lay out uh, the two steps that uh, we have to follow for this particular solution uh, so the first step is going to be that uh, you want to uh, generate uh, individual html pages for each review right so generate uh, uh, the uh, uh, review id i'm going to use that actually let me call it as rid.html and you you know that you need to replace uh, rid with the corresponding id so that's why i'm just like using the angle bracket format here so generate uh, uh, review id.html uh, for uh, each review and then you want to be able to generate uh, uh, um, you know a mass uh, a reviews.html file which has a uh, uh, link to each review uh, html page which is going to be uh, of the form rid.html all right hopefully that makes sense so let's deal with the first step here uh, so let me actually go ahead and uh, create uh, a html file for each review id and i'm going to call that uh, review underscore path which is going to be uh, rid plus dot html right and let me not assume rid is a string so i'm going to go ahead and convert rid to a string so uh, we want to be able to open uh, this html file and write contents to it right so be very careful you already have used a file object called f so uh, we need to use another file object here and let me call it html underscore file and I'm going to go ahead and open uh, review path in write mode in write mode and I'm going to close it right away so that I know that. Uh, that file is being closed you definitely do not want to not close this file because there are thousands of reviews in review1.html you don't want uh, that many open files in fact you should never uh, uh, skip closing a file i would uh, go ahead and say that <coughs> all right so the next thing that i want to do is actually write the contents uh, into this file right so that's going to be uh, simple you're going to just use a write tag and uh, um, what am i going to write i need to be able to write uh, the uh, review and the text right so i can just do things like uh, uh, add the title and uh, uh, add the uh, text but instead of just saying uh, we'll, we'll just dump the contents I'm, I'm going to format it a little bit since we are dealing with html so i'm going to uh, add the title as a header tag recall that h1 to h6 works for a header tag and uh, i want to be able to merge uh, um, the title with uh, the um, uh, you know yeah title with the header tag and then uh, let me go ahead and uh, close the header tag all right not that slash okay and then i want 
to have uh, the text as the next thing, right? Uh, let me actually do one thing. Instead of uh, dumping all the HTML files in the original path, I want to be able to store that in the data path so that uh, it's just like out of the way. So I'm going to just uh, uh, use os.path.join and uh, uh, then uh, join uh, the data string with uh, the name for the HTML. Let me go ahead and run this. Hopefully, uh, we would have gotten the HTML file. So as you can see, uh, it does generate the HTML file. For some reason, uh, we only have one HTML file. Uh, let me go ahead and see why exactly that is the case. Uh, oops, <laughs> sorry about that. I have to actually move all of this code uh, into the for loop. So that's why only one file got generated. And uh, interestingly, that would be the very last review. If you go and look at it, this uh, is going to be the last line. So the reason for that is my for loop uh, 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 ran uh, for the whole CSV data. And then whatever is left out uh, uh, as part of the last uh, line of entry uh, is the one that got uh, uh, you know, used for the HTML creation. Uh, I have fixed that. Uh, hopefully, we'll see all other files. As you can see, it takes a while to generate and yeah, there we have it. Uh, we have like a lot of uh, HTML files that we successfully generated. All right. Uh, now that we have uh, those individual, uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, my laptop is somehow lagging behind. Uh, now that we have those individual uh, uh, HTML uh, pages for each of those reviews, let's go ahead and create the uh, master sort of like reviews file reviews.html. Uh, that's something which is going to be very easy to create, right? So uh, one thing that I don't want to do is I don't want to open the master file inside my for loop. I don't want to repeat the same mistake which I just did. I had like this outside whereas that should be inside the for loop. Uh, the reason that you want to have your open fire a uh, function call for master outside is because uh, you don't want to overwrite uh, uh, the file every uh, for every uh, review file, right? So you're iterating over each review. You want to have a master file for all of those reviews. So you're going to have to open the file outside. So let me go ahead and uh, open uh, reviews. Uh, uh, file outside so I'm just going to call it uh, uh, reviews so uh, I'm going to open reviews.html and uh, I'm going to go ahead and close uh, that file right away all right so uh, I am uh, notice that I'm actually creating reviews.html outside data and not inside data. I want to be able to easily find that because uh, data folder is now going to contain a uh, you know, thousands of HTML files. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, write into reviews file the hyperlink to the uh, individual uh, Amazon review HTML file that we just created. So I need to be able to use uh, the um, A tag which stands for uh, anchor for uh, hyperlink. So let me go ahead and uh, uh, create an a tag and I'll go ahead and close it. So the reason that I'm using a single quote uh, to write this text is I want to be able to use the double code within the a tag as part of uh, the href argument. So I'm uh, using a single quote here instead of uh, escaping the double quote, which uh, makes the code a little bit uh, difficult to read. So uh, I'm going to actually use uh, the string dot format uh, function uh, here. Uh, if you are able to recall, uh, the format function enables you to mention parameter uh, to uh, this curly bra uh, bracket from outside. These curly braces have nothing to do with the uh, dictionary, but uh, just like uh, you can replace uh, uh, um, some, uh, you know, uh, part of the string uh, into this curly braces by mentioning that within the format method call. So uh, let me go ahead and uh, 
you know add uh, uh, we are trying to create a hyperlink to uh, each of those individual uh, review id.html files right so that's what is going to go into uh, the href attribute so we need to have something in here uh, which is going to be the clickable uh, hyperlink part right so what do we have there so the easiest thing to have there uh, uh, would be uh, either the title or the review id right so i'm going to actually uh, combine both of that i'm going to say r id plus uh, i'm going to say title and let me actually add uh, a colon in between those uh, so that uh, uh, it's quite readable all right, so let me go ahead and uh, run this uh, script again. I'm, and I'm going to switch to the other uh, window uh, where I, uh, so data folder is there inside this window, but this is the parent uh, folder. So if I click, oops, <laughs> so I forgot to add the new line. So my review dot, reviews.html file is all jumbled up. So let me go ahead and uh, add a new line at the end of uh, each each of those uh, hyperlink lines so let me go back to reviews.html and refresh the browser oops i forgot to run the code here we go sorry about that so all right um it still looks very ugly what is going on uh, and something else is wrong okay uh, let's actually see uh, what I uh, added as part of uh, the um, you know path okay I am adding review path but somehow that's not uh, showing up there so let me go ahead and uh, print uh, try printing it okay that seems to be fine uh, what exactly is wrong uh, with that then all right let me see so uh for the purpose of debugging uh, i'm going to actually uh, dump uh, this whole string using print over here uh all right so i'm missing thus open for that particular all right so what is it saying okay i'm saying arf uh, data slash uh, that and that is what that gets added okay that's interesting because that seems to be fine okay uh, I'm going to do one thing. So since this is like a minor fix, I'm not going to do it uh, as part of the video. Instead, uh, I'm going to actually go ahead and fix this and uh, post the code uh, after I fix it. Uh, for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to actually uh, do one thing and I'm going to get rid of this uh, data folder. And uh, let's see, uh, instead of uh, saying uh, within the data folder, we'll generate uh, all of that content and I'm going to go ahead and generate that uh, directly we'll see if uh, we are able to fix that issue by doing that um, let me go ahead and refresh reviews dot uh, html ah, somehow uh, that is still not showing up yeah you know you know what uh, instead of uh, hmm, uh, let me actually go to my uh, terminal and I'm going to uh, you know open review reviews.html in a browser rendering and i'm going to see if yeah there we go uh, somehow uh, something is going wrong with the jupyter notebook uh, uh, when i'm doing that so if i backtrack uh, i might still be able to make uh, the original version work without any issues so let me remove the print statements again uh, let me go ahead and run the code again so um, now um, Hmm. I need to be able to delete all of those HTML files, right? Uh, I'm going to do some cleanup. Uh, so let's see. Uh, I'm going to actually uh, backup, uh, create a backup uh, folder, and I'm going to actually go ahead and copy all uh, the HTML files uh, uh, to HTML backup. 
and uh, I am going to delete uh, all the HTML files using the rm command over here. Be very careful when you do such things. Uh, so from the backup folder, I want to copy reviews.html back here to this current folder, which is going to be given by the dot. And then uh, I want to also be able to copy shopping.html. All right, so let's go back to the browser and uh, we'll see see if uh, uh, let me go ahead and uh, refresh the browser uh, all right so we can see that now uh, the original file itself is working and we have all the files in uh, data whereas uh, this folder should not have all the files all right so that seems to be a problem uh, with uh, the um, you know jupyter based rendering of that file for some reason and somehow my slash n is still not showing up there uh, let me see why so let me uh, i am suspecting uh, that i need to add it at the end of my you know after my formatting we'll see let me actually go ahead and rerun that so if i go ahead and do that is that working ha huh. for some reason my new oh ah oh, sorry that was a silly mistake i need to actually add the uh, line break and not the uh, new line sorry about that so um all right so if i go ahead and uh, refresh the browser there we have it so sorry about that i got mixed up with the new line and uh, the line break all right so that's it for the second demo so i'm going to take uh, a few more minutes to get through the last uh, few slides so i'm going to introduce to you few other uh, tags here the first one is going to be uh, for uh, images so you can Im as you are aware you can insert images into html pages and the way that you do that is uh, by using the image tag and image tag is going to have an attribute called uh, source which is going to be a path to the image that you are trying to insert so you can uh, do uh, things like you can insert an image uh, in between uh, uh, you know text content just by uh, adding the image tag and as you can see the image tag uh, is uh, just having an open uh, tag and there is no close tag if you really want to format the image into a new line uh, you need to explicitly add the uh, line break wherever uh, it is appropriate to be able to uh, you know move uh, the image into a new line all right uh, one other attribute that i want to mention about uh, image uh, tag is that you can mention width or height i would recommend you to not uh, mention both of it uh, because if you mention one of those the other parameter gets uh, automatically formatted uh, into an appropriate uh, number if you try to mention both sometimes uh, you might uh, make your image look very weird so width controls uh, the width and height controls the height of the image uh, as the name specifies so uh, uh, Another attribute that you can use with respect to an image is you can say border where like you can add a border around the image. Uh, you can also uh, mention within the border tag what is the thickness of the border. So if you have uh, size 1 that's going to be a thin border and uh, if you have size 5 that's going to be a very thick border. All right. So the next thing that I want to talk about uh, is uh, table format uh, in HTML. So table formatting in HTML uh, has uh, uh, a few tags uh, involved. So there are three tags. So the parent tag is going to be table within which the whole table will be enclosed and for each row you are going to have table row tag tr in short and for each uh, uh, you know cell of the table uh, you are going to have the table uh, d uh, uh, tag which is table data uh, which is the cell tag uh, I mean not a tag which is corresponding to a cell within the table. So as in this example we have like uh, two different row tags uh, the first one uh, here and the second one here and each row has uh, two cells so you have like uh, uh, two cross two column uh, two cross two table here right uh, as you can uh, see the table uh, uh, 
tag doesn't actually come up with uh, any border it's a very simple tabular form without any border so if you want to add a border you have to mention the border attribute as part of the table tag and you can also mention the, what sort of uh, border uh, you need to have all right so uh, if you want to add uh, a column uh, to your uh, table you need to add a td uh, uh, tag for each row whereas if you want to add a row you need to add a whole new tr tag hopefully that makes sense all right so i'm actually not going to cover this demo and uh, i'll uh, leave you to figure out how to write the code uh, for this uh, particular uh, demo uh, i have like few other uh, options for you to try out uh, if in case you are interested so i want to quickly talk about how you can uh, self uh, teach yourself uh, more html related uh, content so uh, there are free online resources for html uh, for example you have the w3 schools uh, which is a really really good source because you can just like uh, uh, test and uh, uh, learn uh, html format uh, right there on the website you can go uh, check it out if you're interested in learning more and uh, there is a uh, one other format uh, which is often used with html which is something which is called as cascading style sheets as the name mentions Uh, css is for uh, uh, creating a style for uh, your html uh, that's also something interesting uh, uh, which you can poke around if you're interested in creating your own web page and uh, uh, i also want to quickly mention about uh, javascript which is uh, uh, another programming language which is closely associated with uh, html and a lot of web pages uh, will have javascript content uh, which the web browsers are capable of rendering all right uh, that will be it for today uh, the next uh, lecture is going to be about uh, parsing html files and we'll see how you can uh, uh, you know uh, download data sets from online uh, which use the html format All right uh, happy friday everyone take care